All right. Uh, so welcome to uh, tonight's meeting. We, tonight we will be reviewing the Centennial Park draft master plan. And uh, today we're gonna start here uh, first off with some introductions and go over a little meeting etiquette. Uh, then we will be doing a short presentation about the project overview. Uh, and then um, we will have a couple of questions for you that we'd like you to answer, and then be here to answer your questions and listen to your concerns. Uh, Hugh, would you like to introduce uh, any members from city commissions and council that are here? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, first of all, I'd like everyone to recognize our consultant, uh, Helix um, Consult uh, Environmental Engineering, and they are Meredith Branstead, the project manager, and Scott Redding and Carolyn Hagel. So thank you very much, Helix people, for um, putting this all together. Also on tonight's meeting, uh, we anticipate to have three of our Parks and Recreation Commissioners present. Uh, Sean McMahon, I think, is already on the, the call, and I didn't see yet if the other two have arrived, but we have our Vice Chair, Keith Thompson, and also Danielle Shea that we're expecting to join us. So if, um, just so you know that our your park, your, the City Parks and Recreation Committee Commission has is well represented um, also, the prior meeting that we had on the same exact subject, we'll go over the same information that we had on Saturday morning. Uh, we had three of our, uh, a different three of our commissioners present then. So thank you very much, commissioners. I also see our department chair, um, Reggie Hubbard here, and from the city manager's office, George Ann Megersmith. Uh, so thank you very much, all of you. And this is an exciting thing. This is a, a great project that we're just putting underway. I'll hand it back to you, Meredith. Uh, thank you, Hugh. Uh, so today, uh, just a quick reminder to please mute yourself when you're not speaking. Uh, and the mute button uh, here can be found. It should be in your left-hand corner of your, your command bar. Um, and then you can mute, your, mute or unmute yourself by clicking on that button. And if you have phoned in, you should be able to do that using the star six. And we'll go over um, how to raise your hand at the end of this. Um, if you have questions you'd like to ask during the presentation, you can put them in the chat. We'll be monitoring that, but we are probably going to save. Um, we're planning on saving questions until the end and answering them all at one time, unless it's a kind of critical item. So uh, with that, we wanted to start this presentation with a little review of the project site history. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on on this site, uh, starting in the early 1900s. Part of the southern part of the site was used as the city dump, uh, and then for a portion of the time it was also a wastewater treatment plan, plant, but that closed in 1972. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, in 1977, the first portion, the 62 acres on the south parcel, was designated as a park. Um, by 1986, an additional 73 acres were added to that park, um, and then that opened the way from the 1990s for some recreation and, and sports um, uh, fields and, and sports courts to be constructed, uh, including the existing ball fields, the tennis courts, uh, and in the late 90s, an additional 130 acres was added to the park, which are those, those far the northern parks. Um, in the 1990s and early 2000s, we also, the city had a number of trail planting and uh, or trail construction and tree planting along the various uh, parts of, of Horse Creek. Um, and they also uh, constructed, there were some hobby fields, which were some artificial turf fields um, were constructed in 1999. And those have now since been redeveloped uh, into the interim dog park that was constructed in 2019. Uh, in 2000, the landfill was capped um, and kind of permanently closed. And then in 2002, the four soccer fields that make up the Horse Creek Soccer Complex uh, were constructed. And that is being managed by the Vacaville United Soccer Club. And then the other kind of important thing that happened on the site was in 2006, they were able to construct the bikeway on the old railroad right of way in a rails to trails project. 
And then in developing this master plan, so this is the draft master plan that we're talking about today, but it has been underway and is based on a lot of information that's been collected by the city over time. So in 2008, there, um, there was a planned golf course for the northern portion of the site. A feasibility study was completed and it was found that that wasn't going to be a very economically viable option. Uh, and that's really what opened a large portion of the site up for recreation opportunities. In 2013, the city completed a recreation needs assessment that looked at what recreation need, um, needs are for the entire city, um, both in 2013 and then looking into the future. And then uh, starting in 2017, the city started working on updating their city park and recreation master plan. And simultaneously with that, they were developing this draft master plan to this point. Um, so another consultant did a variety of outreach activities in 2017. They did 11 pop-up events and surveys at various uh, events that were occurring throughout the city and over 500 people participated in those pop-up surveys. In the spring of 2018, they had a separate online survey and as you see there were almost 600 responses to that. Uh, then in April to September of 2019, there was additional outreach both at the Recreation Expo and uh, an online survey. And again, over 500 people participated in that outreach. Um, and then in April, that resulted in April 2020, the Centennial Park Master Plan was drafted. And that's what we are substantially talking about today. We've made a few small uh, changes over the last few months since Helix uh, joined the city in this effort, um, but we're basically we're mostly working with what was prepared in 2020. And then in April of 2021, the city park and recreation master plan, which is an overwhelming or overarching document that looks um, for the next I think, 20 years at what are the needs uh, of the whole city uh, in terms of park and recreation and how can the city provide services that that its community wants. Um, and that was adopted in April 2021. And if you're interested, it's available on the city's website. So for our site, we have an existing conditions assessment. Some of the key things, of course, are, as we talked about, that capped landfill uh, in the southwest corner. Um, some existing ponds that were part of the wastewater treatment plant left over from that from when that was working um, in the southeast corner. And between them, we have the baseball fields and the Horse Creek soccer complex. There's also some existing tennis courts, a roller hockey rink, and then other trails uh, throughout the site. Uh, and one of the, the key really opportunities on the site is that there's some really lovely views to the surrounding hills. Uh, around. Uh, and there are these uh, really four riparian corridors. Uh, there's Pine Tree Creek uh, in the very southern part, and then the three branches of Horse Creek. So there's a lot of um, a lot of really nature opportunities here. And um, the Audubon Society did a bird count uh, in the la within the last few years, and they found over 80 species of birds here on the park site. So it really is um, a really great resource for um, nature and enjoying uh, enjoying nature and viewing wildlife as well as having these other more active sports uh, fields. So based on all of that outreach and surveys and recreation needs assessment that was done previously, the, um, this uh, draft master plan was prepared. And this slide just gives you an overview of the master plan so you can kind of orient on the site. On the left hand side is actually the south. The whole thing is rotated 90 degrees. Um, and so that is Browns Valley Parkway. And um, the two on the bottom side, you can see part of the Nut Tree Airport um, there, which is located east of the site residential development to the west um, and other commercial and more kind of those types of um, industrial buildings are to the north. Uh, and so we're going to go through now and, and look at, at the in a little more detail at different areas of this master plan. So the site was divided into kind of three areas, again, based on a lot of the outreach that was done um, it, previously in the development. 
And the active recreation zone is located on the south end of the property between Browns Valley Parkway and that south fork of Horse Creek. And that encompasses all of the existing sports fields, sports courts, the interim dog park, um, and parking lots are all included in this active recreation zone. Some of the items that are going to be included in that are proposed for the master plan are the existing sports fields and the courts, a new community recreation center, uh, a splash pad, central lawn, and group picnic areas, uh, both kind of medium and large size, uh, lighted courts for basketball, tennis, and pickleball, a dog park, a new, new dog park, not the interim one um, that existing right now, uh, a skate park, an RC car track, and then a variety of walking trails and also some restrooms at key locations near various um, kind of activity nodes. So these are some kind of zoomed in uh, examples and some kind of sample, sample photos of what these amenities might look like. So the splash tap pad and central lawn would be a kind of a an area that's really focused on kids and families having fun. You can see kind of a photo simulation there. Um, the dog park would be uh, quite expanded, uh, approximately twice the um, the size of the interim dog park, or even even maybe a little larger. Um, and that would be look that's proposed to be in the um, southwest corner is sort of at, uh, over part of the existing landfill. Uh, there would also be a new skate park proposed in that area. Uh, here around the ball fields is really looking, making that into more of a, uh, or expanding the sports complex by adding lighted basketball courts, the pickleball courts, and the tennis courts here. And then just due south of that would be the community recreation center. And then south of those would be boardwalks and wetland, wetland walking trails around those existing wetlands that still exist. The next zone is the Creekside Discovery Zone. And this is this wedge uh, outlined in blue that's located between the south and middle forks of Horse Creek. This zone is intended to have an event pavilion capable of hosting uh, a seated uh, event of about 200 people. So uh, the thought is that that would be used for weddings and other celebrations of that nature. Um, an orchard, kind of speaking back to the history of Vacaville as um, in growing fruits and nuts. Native plant and pollinator gardens, a nature playscape, so this is where we have a, a large playground, sand volleyball courts, and more group picnic areas, restroom buildings, and then again, more walking trails along the existing creek, creeks, adding to that network throughout the park. Uh, so here's some examples, uh, a little zoom in on the nature playscape and the picnic area here in the center. And actually one of the things that has been added since these were originally developed is connecting that spray park, uh, adding a pedestrian bridge across the, the creek here from the spray park uh, in the active recreation zone to this nature play area to help facilitate use of those. And here's some photos of what that might look like, kind of sand play areas um, or where people can, where children can mix sand and water, practice balance, really um, a lot of innovative and kind of cool play stuff. Uh, and then this Slide looks a little bit more uh, at the area to the north the, of, or I'm sorry, to the west of that, the event pavilion, orchard, and gardens, with some ideas of what that area may look like. And finally, our third zone is the nature exploration zone. And this is located north of the middle fork of Horse Creek, and you can see it's about half the site. So, development in this area, really the only developed uh, area will be the bike park with a dirt trails and a skills course. This is not a, um, it's not a motorized, intended to be a motorized bike park. This is going to be a, just a mountain bike, um, straight pedal bike park. Um, there will also be an elevated meadow overlook in the kind of in the center of the meadow area, and then riparian oak woodland and, and grassland habitat restoration. And there will be some restrooms and group picnic areas by the bike park. And again, more walking trails. And in this area, it's proposed to have also outdoor fitness stations along the loop of the walking trail in this area. And this gives an example of what uh, is being 
considered for the bike park. Um, and here the bike park would be up in the northeast corner of the site uh, with a parking area, group picnic area nearby, things like that. So the project timeline. Uh, we're here today. We were we listened uh, to everything the community had to say on Saturday, and then we're here tonight to do the same thing. Uh, and with that information, we'll be revising this draft master plan, um, developing a phasing plan and a cost estimate for those phases, um, because uh, it's it's not intended that this entire park will be built all at once. It will have to be implemented in in sections. So in April to June to 2023 is when we're scheduled to present those plans to the Park and Recreation Committee Commission, sorry, the Planning Commission and City Council. Um, awesome. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and so those will also be opportunities for you to, for the public to come see what's going on and um, give comments and feedback at any of those meetings. And that is the end of the planning process. Once the city council has uh, approved the master plan, then, and that will be at the point then that now city staff can go and start looking for funding on how to actually implement the plan. So as I mentioned, we're going to be developing a phasing plan and the cost estimate, and they'll take that information and go, they can look for Measure M funds, uh, request those that the city council allocate that, um, capital improvement funds, or go apply for grants from outside sources. Um, and so the, and, and while they're considering those options, they're, the project will need to go through environmental review. That will probably take about six to 12 months. Um, and I see that there is a question about noise. And so that would be really looked at in this CEQA environmental review process. Uh, and um, that will be following once the master plan is um, essentially drafted, it will go through that environmental review process. Following that pending funding was would be when um, construction documents for that first phase may be developed. And that would be um, probably take 12 to 18 months De, um, depending on what elements are in phase one. And then construction of the first phase would follow on with that, which would again take six to 12 months, really depending on what elements are included in that first phase, uh, possibly longer if it included something um, very intensive such as the recreation center. So that is the end of our just introductory presentation. Um, and I want to say first, thank you for your time now. And if you have any questions um, or comments about, um, about this that you think of later after this meeting, please go ahead and email or call Hugh, who is our project city project manager. His number is here on the screen. That's 707-449-5655 or hhesterman at cityofvacaville.com. That his information is also on the city's website. Um, Meredith, this is Hugh. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to correct that. It's actually H-E-W dot Hesterman. Oh. Very That's, sorry about that. I didn't catch it. It's that okay because I copied that from the website. I'm going to let you know that. <laughs> okay. So H E W dot Hesterman. Maybe they secretly coded both of them in. Um, and we'll we'll get that corrected as well. Um, okay. So I see we have questions and I'm going to come back to those. The, the next thing I wanted to do actually before we get into answering those questions is um we actually have a short poll. So based on this discussion uh, and kind of these things, uh, we just wanted to get your feedback on what, um, what you think are the highest priority options. So I'm gonna start a poll and we'd ask you to please take me. There's, there's four questions, two of them are multiple choice and then two of them are fill in the answer if you have an other uh, other answer in the multiple choice. So I'm going to start that poll now and we'll give everybody just a minute or two to go through and answer that. When you've answered the four questions, hit submit and then we'll be able to look at those answers.
Thanks. I see some people are starting to submit answers. Thank you for that. So we'll just leave it open for a bit longer. Okay, leave the poll up for just one more minute. I know some people are having to type and if you're on your phone, that can be hard. Okay, I am going to go ahead and close the poll now. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just going to quickly share the results. So we'll be able to look through this in, and see what you wrote if you filled in the other. But you can see just looking at this that um, the top, um, top priorities for people who are attending this meeting are that the nature trails and open space, bike park and bathrooms are all getting high 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 um, things. Also, the pickleball court is also uh, kind of a, a high priority as well. So that's really useful information and the dog park. Um, and so we'll look at your type short answers. I see that um, many of you, about half of you, uh, answered something else. So we will look at that in depth um, after the um, uh, after the, the meeting. And in terms of the priorities, um, I see that the uh, the bike park was a very high priority, uh, as were the nature trails. Um, or sorry, the what feature do you like best? The, the bike park and the nature trails were, were kind of highest. Also the tennis and pickleball courts were the other kind of high score. So, um, and again, lots of write-in answers. Uh, so, Thank you. And we will have all of this, um, all of that data later. I appreciate you all taking a few moments to do that in the meeting. Stop sharing. And... Uh, so with that, um, in terms of the discussion, we are going to um, go ahead and start with the chat questions. And then we will go ahead, if you have questions other than that and you want to raise your hand and, and speak to the group, we will get to those as we go through the chat. So I know there's a couple of questions about, about sand volleyball. I'm going to try and answer all of those at once here. Um, uh, so um, the, the sand volleyball was, um, at this point, is not planned to be lit, um, but that may be taken under consideration. Um, and um, uh, there had been details about a sound or wind wall, but I think that's an interesting idea that we will just note for when detailed design on that area starts. And there was one um, 
Well, thing, uh, there was a question about that third court. Actually, if you go to the um, the revised master plan that's available on the website and that we showed kind of in the beginning, we actually have moved that third court up so that they are all three courts are grouped together. That was one of those tweaks that we made in the last few months, Ashley. Um, I think that was the questions about sand volleyball courts. Um, so going back up. So Mary asked about uh, noise abatement. Um, yes, that is one of those questions that will um, that will be uh, considered in the environmental impact report, or I'm sorry, in the CEQA document, whether that's an environmental impact report or an initial study and, and mitigated negative, negative declaration. Whatever that CEQA environmental review document is, will look at noise and at things that might to um, to abate noise and what's kind of reasonable for this. Hugh, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, the exist, there's an existing conditional use permit for the, for the park. And one of the conditions there is uh, specifically to not uh, have uh, the uh, nighttime lighted fields within a thousand feet of the uh, adjoining residents to the west. And that is primarily to try to address nighttime noises, which are tend to tend to um, uh, be more noticeable than daytime uh, sounds. Uh, we also, you know, there will be some additional buildings and structures and trees and other things that we think will help mitigate some of the noise. Uh, but this is a, a community park. It has been designated a community park for many years. And so the types of activities that uh, are planned for here um, are expected that there will be some noise produced, uh, just like there, there currently is. Uh, but we will certainly um, try to keep that more on the away from the residential areas. So hopefully that at least provides a, a beginning insight into the approach there. Great. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, so one of our next questions was, what is the predominant wind direction through the park? Um, and I'm actually going to go back up to our um, master plan slide real quick so we can talk about that if I can find it. While you're looking for that, I'll just add that anyone who lives in the area knows we have occasional very strong winds from the north that uh, just rip through the park. And we also have more prevailing winds from the southwest that also can be uh, quite uh, troublesome for people who are trying to play pickleball and some other some of those other um, light duty sports. Yeah, so um, so sort of uh, from both directions, um, but the the north winds are really I think what uh, were noted as being of most concern, especially in relation to uh, to ball sports. Uh, and then the capped landfill is in fact um, it's this darker. Um, kind of darker brown colored polygon in the upper, uh, I guess the upper left corner of the site here, um, just under the sea and existing conditions. Um, and, and there's, there is it's that area of the site next to the existing tennis courts um, and, and sort of kitty corner uh, to the upper right from the baseball fields. So hopefully that is helpful for you, Peter. Um, Question we had from D is, is ongoing maintenance of the bathrooms, healthy uh, health and safety monitoring included in, in the planning and ongoing costs. Uh, so we will be working with the city's maintenance team as part of the cost estimate um, as we will be developing the construction cost estimate and then working with them to have them weigh in on the ongoing maintenance costs for that and so that they can give their opinion um, of that. So yes, that is going to be looked at. Um, and I think that's a good point. And it was brought up also on Saturday that um, maintenance obviously is, is really important uh, for this and adding, ultimately adding um, this kind of extensive recreation features is going to uh, mean, mean more maintenance um, and probably more maintenance staff or in whatever capacity those come to the city. Hugh, did you want to add anything? Uh, just regarding maintenance, uh, I, I used an analogy on Saturday uh, for the provision of parks for a full-service city such as Vacaville. 
that there are three very important elements and that they be matched. It's as if you would take a three-legged stool. One leg would be the, the acreage, the amount of land that you have to dedicate toward parks. The second is the cost of the construction to actually build those parks. And that third leg is the cost to be able to maintain those, uh, whatever it is you build into perpetuity. If you cut off any one of those legs, that stool will fall over. So we are very much aware that uh, we don't want to waste any public funds and not have enough money to maintain those facilities. All right. Um, and then next we had a few more questions here about um, the, the bike park. The question was, is there a possibility for an asphalt paved pump track within the bike park area? Um, I think there's that possibility. Um, that has like the details of what's in there hasn't have not been um, worked out. Um, so I think as that develops and if there is interest in that, um, I don't see a reason that there wouldn't that wouldn't be an option. Um, Hugh, I don't know if that's been discussed at the city at all. Yes, uh, the, there are different types of bike park amenities that uh, we are grappling with. But you're absolutely right, Meredith, that the details on which of those to be included has not been decided. There will be future uh, public meetings as we as we begin the detailed design of, for that area. And those types of questions we'll, we'll get into in great detail at that time. Uh, and there was another question here about um, uh, is really four to four and a half real years really the expected beginning of the first phase? Um, it could be as soon as is about three years, but by the time we get through that, that um, the planning process um, and, and then through construction, it, we are probably still looking a few years out for any substantial um, changes. Obviously in that intervening few years, the city may be making um, updates and um, doing other improvements to the existing features that are going to stay on site, like the, the sports fields and things like that, um, that are then consistent with this master plan that could be integrated into the final kind of long-term design. Um, so it's not to say that there will be nothing happening on the site for three years, just that these large new development wouldn't happen for three to four years. You're correct. Hugh, do you want to... Um, yeah, I just this might be the perfect opportunity to point out that some that the, this master plan shows some areas that are actually would take away a, a couple of existing elements, and that's all handled in the phasing plan, so that we wouldn't remove the we would not remove an existing facility until the new one was uh, ready for use. So that question came up, for example, about the uh, uh, the dog park and the and the tennis courts uh, before. Uh, those are all very um, needed uh, facilities, and so they would not be taken away from the park until the new ones were opened. Um, okay, just skimming through the rest of the questions we have. I know we have some that relate to each other. So um, there's a couple of questions I think I'll sort of relating to each other about security around this bike park area and making sure that um, people don't aren't then um, like getting onto the rest of the walking trails throughout the park with motorbikes and other things. So as I said, the intention of this bike park is this is not intended to be a motorized bike park at all. Um, for that, a uh, security fence around the bike park area, it is going to be, um, you know, or it, I think at this point it's envisioned as being unlighted. And so yes, um, like large areas of the rest of the park, there would be gates and security fences um, to keep people out of certain areas at, you know, after dark. Um, uh, but as to exactly what what that what exactly that's going to look like, again, that's a detailed design that hasn't been there, but the intention is that it would be a basically a dawn to dusk uh, amenity, not not operating after dark. Um, uh, will the new proposed parking lot near the bike park be gated? Um, yes, I think probably I see Hugh nodding. Yes, I think it would be similarly managed similarly to the rest of the park. So when, um, you know, when the park is closed for the night, those gates would get closed. This um, might be a good opportunity, Meredith, to point out that the city also now has a park ranger program. And uh, 
that has we know there's been problems with uh, both uh, four wheel vehicles and motorbikes out in Centennial Park, as well as a number of other locations. And so those um, those park rangers uh, will be showing up on on different times and, and dates and, and can be called uh, if anyone observes problems, too. So we we want to get that problem under control. Certainly the the bike park will be um, attractive, I would say, to motorized bikes, uh, motorized bikes, and that is a, a big no-no <laughs> for the park. Um, uh, and so I know there was a there was a question uh, about well, what's going to keep motorized bikes um, out of the wildlife areas and running across open areas? Um, it's apparently this person thinks that it's a problem today. Um, and that that may increase. Um, I think, uh, you know, there will be some kind of standard fencing around those open space areas. Um, and as you said, I guess a lot of it is um, having eyes on the park and and more um, enforcement keeping keeping an eye out for people who are not using the park well. Um, you, if you want to speak to that again. Yeah, well. absolutely. Just and appropriate fencing or other types of restrictions that might uh, help in preventing those activities. I think just simply having more people out here using Centennial Park has already helped uh, for a while. It was well in our 2013 needs assessment. One of the questions we asked was uh, uh, how many residents uh, have visited Centennial Park or, or knew of it. And only half of the residents even knew it existed at that time. And that's sort of surprised staff because there's a lot of really amazing uh, nature areas to enjoy out here, not to mention all the active uses south of the creek. So I think the more people that are out here, uh, you'll see it becoming more eyes on the park, more people that will report problems. Also, I, I would like to point out that the um, there is an a, existing um, Currently, uh, I think it's a dirt road that runs through. There's a sewer line that runs on on this road that should that you can see here, that would lead to the um, the bike park parking lot. And so, looking that road would be um, uh, you know semi improved, but it is intended to to allow police or other security staff or maintenance staff to be able to drive from one end of the park to the other, not open to the public. Um, but that um, that improved access. Uh, for enforcement um, staff may be helpful as well. Uh, and then our next question is, is the intent to have trees around the bike park area uh, to block wind? And as you can see on here, yes, it is. It would both be serving to block wind and to create a visual buffer of the bike park from surrounding areas. Right? Um, and also, uh, as I said, this whole northern half of the site is really the focus is um, is habitat restoration. So looking at um, this, all these trees will probably be native plants that are, are a riparian or oak woodland restoration. Um, and then our next question was, does the map depict a walking trail around the perimeter of the park? I couldn't tell. I think there's a few questions we're gonna, all right. I did not think about having to click back and forth here on my presentation. So um, yes, there is um, there is a walking tra uh, walking trail. There is actually a 5K loop trail that kind of winds throughout the park, um, but there would be a, a, a kind of perimeter trail that that um, uses the existing. Um, the existing walkway or trail that runs along the back of the residential development to the west along that rail corridor um, and then along the north boundary and then along the sewer kind of access maintenance road um, that runs, runs uh, down the um, east side of the park. And then from there, you wind through all of those sports fields. And then there's a number of trails, as you can see, running through the meadow area in, in between. So there'd be a lot of options for creating loops and sub loops uh, within that. But there is a, a generally perimeter walking trail. We made a few comments about um, the soccer field. So there is um, there was a, a new soccer um, a field constructed north of the original soccer complex um, uh, just recently. And Actually, that's west. I'm sorry, I did it. I, 
<laughs> it's hard. Thank you. <laughs> West above on this plan of the of the existing Horse Creek soccer complex. And there is a, a, a field that was constructed just within the last few years. Um, due to the uh, the desire to be able to group some other activities into that central node, uh, the master plan at this point does propose relocating that field to the um, east side of the existing complex instead. So the number of fields would remain the same, um, but it would be relocated. I, again, that's something that kind of came out in the original design process. Um, and uh, there's that. Uh, in terms of the splash pads being Meredith, on. Can I, um, can I address that just a, a little yes, bit? Yes, I'm sorry. You jump um, in. Yeah, that, that issue was, was very, was known before we uh, constructed that that new uh, small field, that U10 field, uh, but in the uh, the agreement with the soccer club, uh, that would not be eliminated until we built the larger field east of the the, the existing facility, which is so much larger that it would, I would say, almost at least double, if not triple, the amount of available turf for soccer play. So, um, thank. Thank you, Hugh. And um, in terms of the splash pad, um, splash pads, any new ones these days are generally constructed as a recirculating system. And so the relative water use is um, is low. It's not that it's going down the drain. Um, but I, uh, I personally can't speak to how the city uses splash pads or demand for them. Um, so I don't know, Hugh, if you have any additional information on that. Um, I can just add that uh, that we have some of both. So we have what's referred to as a, a, a misting play area down at the South Town Park. And that puts out very small amounts of water, but allows the kids to, to play and get wet, thoroughly wet in the summer day. That does not have a recirculating system, but the amount of water that's, that's uh, used there on a typical summer day is less than what would be used to irrigate the same amount of turf. And that's something that's not commonly recognized. Uh, a couple of our other um, uh, um, recirculating uh, areas have, or actually um, splash areas have pumps and a recirculating system. Um, but they, the new requirement now is that you also have to treat that water uh, as you would in a swimming pool. And that gets, that includes filters and chlorination and all that. Uh, but the goal there is to, is to minimize the amount of water that's actually wasted. Um. Our next question was, will the park continue to be gated and bathrooms locked to limit late night access? Um, and the answer is yes, it will continue to be used in the same way that the use permit requires and that all the parks in the city are used. Uh, Mary replied, thank you Mary, to uh, the question about um, winds. I can see what that answer is for. Um, and um, and so, and then we had again, again a question about um, more more room for more soccer fields and bathrooms. And there is, um, I, I believe, sorry, I think looking at this, um, well, the new maintenance building would go in um, as part of the Horse Creek Soccer Complex. Um, and then, um, in terms of developing bathrooms or other um, other amenities within the soccer complex itself. Um, I think the city is is uh, open to discussions with the soccer club, but at this point, the the soccer club is responsible for um, for improvements within the soccer complex um, per their their lease, is my understanding. Um, uh, okay, I we have a question here that says, "Furnish a number for Rangers, please." I live against the West End. Okay. Hugh, could you, um, I don't know if you have that handily available, yep. we can post I'm that. I'm typing it in right now. Okay, great. So, so that it is, I'll, I'll say it at 707 area code 449-5124. Uh, that number is not uh, answered constantly because both of our rangers are out in the field at various times, but a message can be left at that number if no one answers. So that's 449-5124. Thank you, Hugh. Um, our next question was, do I remember a gym and disc golf course on the earlier plans? Um, 
Yeah, I see Hugh nodding as yes. At this point, there's not a disc golf course included in the ma draft master plan now, but the gym would be part of that recreation center, which is shown on this plan as this large white L um, just to the left of the soccer complex. Uh, and that is a, is, as Ron is about a 75,000 square foot community center, which would include a gym, meeting rooms, um, lots, you know, potentially lots and lots of things. Again, the exact programming of what what uh, facilities are going to be in there is something that uh, should this, when this moves forward, it will, um, that will be kind of considered and there'll be, uh, I'm sure, lots more outreach on what that's going to really look like. Um, all right, when the next question, can we speak to parking allocation with the new amenities? It's already a traffic jam every Saturday through a good chunk of the year. With added amenities, the parking doesn't seem to match. Good question. Um, there is additional parking um, going in. Um, and I think the parking has been designed in accordance with uh, park requirements and city requirements for, for um, that. But Hugh, did you have any specific discussions of parking um, as the master plan was developed in the past that you can share? Yes. Uh, so clearly, um, I mean, folks have probably seen on busy soccer and baseball days, the existing parking lots uh, can be filled. Uh, and so we recognize that and adding another uh, soccer field, as was done recently, uh, we put in some temporary uh, gravel lots uh, or lot, I should say, to uh, help augment that. But on the eastern side of this plan, you'll see a fairly large parking lot that would uh, be added to serve the soccer complex primarily. And then additional, like Meredith pointed out, additional parking would be provided to a, a number of the other amenities that currently isn't there. For example, the dog park, the uh, the picnic areas, the pavilion area, uh, the the play areas, the sand volleyball, um, and of course the rec center, which will be, I think the rec center will be our biggest challenge uh, because we'll have to uh, uh, um, adjust that to make sure that for whatever uses are put in the rec center that we have sufficient parking to satisfy. All right, um, and I just see there's some more comments um, of as we scroll down about parking um, that it looks like there um, there may be less, let's see, sorry, I'm just skimming through. Okay, um, so uh, I, hopefully that's addressed your parking comment uh, question. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and we will- I can respond to the pickleball question. Uh, the city already has plans for four new pickleball, dedicated pickleball courts on the southeast side of town uh, associated with or within the uh, Roberts Ranch subdivision. Those will be lighted courts. And we recognize that uh, with pickleball's uh, uh, popularity that it's put a strain on our existing tennis courts uh, because we do not have any pickleball courts. So we're, we are addressing that. Um, as was pointed out earlier, building new facilities take, and planning for them takes a tremendous amount of time. Um, I did also want to point out that parking and traffic is another one of the items that um, will be will most likely be really looked at in um, a more detail um, as the in in the environmental review process that CEQA process um, for a site such as this where there's so much going on. So there there is going to be another um, round, and if need, if changes are needed to the parking to meet requirements or as a mitigation measure that comes out in that process, then that might change some of the things in the master plan or change some of the layout. So, um, uh, you know, this is, um, there is there is that opportunity and that potential for some change, changes to be made for that. Um, question from Joanne, how will you access the new parking area of the bike park? Um, that will actually come in from the north from Allison Drive, which I believe comes off of Vaca Valley Parkway. That's right. Yeah, it'll um, essentially have a dedicated entrance. There's already a gate there uh, where Vaca Valley, excuse me, where Allison, the north part of Allison terminates. 
And uh, the city had a previous plan years ago that Allison would continue right through the park. And that plan has been put aside, uh, but it is where the sewer alignment is. So the bike park would enter through that gate and come into that parking lot specifically for the uh, bike park. Right. So that'd be through the bike park. It may also serve as a trailhead for the trails through that northern section. Right. Um, there's a question, will there be water spigots within the bike park for watering dirt elements? Um, I think that that's a, a, an amenity that could be included. Um, there is, uh, I believe there is water available. So that is something that can be looked at as the bike park is detailed out. And we're noting all of those ideas now, um, Peter, for, for that, to get past uh, to that future thing. Yeah, let me pick up on that, Meredith. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding water, uh, currently, the, the, uh, the fields are irrigated with city water, uh, but there is a potential here because of the, Puda, the adjacency of the Puda South Canal. Uh, there's a possibility of using uh, raw water for irrigation, and we're looking into that. That could be quite significant, and perhaps as little as one third of the cost of city treated water. So that's one of the things we're exploring for uh, watering for all the irrigation in the park. Right. Um, there was a question about relocating that soccer field, um, and Hugh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe, well, actually, why don't you answer that, so I don't have yeah. to. Read yeah, it. so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, negotiated with when uh, the soccer club dis, uh, determined to go ahead with their fifth field, uh, they call it field E, so the city recognizing if we were, we, the city, were to take away that field, uh, that it, we would first build the new field. Uh, to the it's shown on the east side of the soccer complex so there would no, be no loss in fact it would be a substantial gain to go to have that new larger field right. first and and in that respect the city would be responsible for the cost of building the new field right right, right. Yeah. um okay we had a question how many bathrooms are proposed and how much parking is being allocated to each area um how many bathrooms Let's see if I can remember. I think there are bathrooms proposed at the um, permanent bathrooms at the existing ball fields, obviously in the community center, um, in the the soccer complex um, has some planned in the master plan for that that the um, was previously done. Um, area. Would, sorry, um, at the play area and the um, and the event center, and then there are going to be restrooms back at the bike park too. So I believe there are six um, different restroom locations. Uh, as I said, they uh, both restrooms and um, kind of uniform maintenance buildings or standardized maintenance buildings um, are going to be are proposed at this point to be scattered around the park. So at the different kind of high use areas. So that um, uh, rather than having like a large single maintenance yard, um, kind of more specific uh, machinery and tools and equipment can be stored at where needed uh, throughout the park. Uh, and there's another question about bathrooms. If bathrooms can be cleaned multiple times a day, Hugh, could you address the maintenance? Yeah, question? absolutely. Uh, yeah, as you probably all know, uh, bathrooms are a uh... A, a, a problem or they attract problems. Uh, our staff typically does a, a morning and an evening check. And that's when they open the bathroom and when they lock it at night. Uh, and uh, I, unless it was a, uh, you know, a special event or a high use area, which required more frequent cleaning, I would guess that, that uh, we initially would start off with a uh, a check on the bathroom both morning and night at the opening and closing. But that's not to say during special events or, or, or high use periods that it might be different than that. So that really gets into a, a maintenance issue that I can't really answer very well at this point in time. And um, and to jump back, uh, sorry, we didn't really answer that second question of how much parking is being allocated to each area. Um, so it's not because of the nature of the park, it's not firmly allocated, um, right? It, uh, and I apologize, I do not have the total number of parking spaces um, off the top of my head, but I am happy to follow up if if you like. Um, we can follow up with you, Doris, on that if you want that more information. The, yeah, the master plan does have numbers associated with each new, each of the parking mm -hmm. lots, um, but the it should be noted that the 
uh, soccer complex uh, has been extended the use of gra informal gravel parking lots. Uh, mm -hmm. And those aren't used as typically, they're not used as efficiently as Mark's dolls. So uh, you could get more parking in a, in a formal parking lot than in a open gravel field. Right. Um, and we, I know we've addressed, there was a comment about pickleball courts and that there, there's no dedicated courts. And you, if you addressed that earlier. Um, uh, we have a, a comment about noise concerns. Uh, wouldn't it be better to orient the amphitheater in a north-south direction instead of east-west or put it on the east side between the soccer and bike complexes? Um, I see, so looking, I can see about um, wanting to, or concerns about noise uh, meeting the residential development um, to the west. Um, Hugh, did MIG look at placing it in other areas when the master plan was being developed? Yes, uh, specifically asking at, or answering the question about the area between the bike park and the soccer fields. Uh, what you don't see on this master plan is some detention that would be displaced. Yes, right in that area where you're mm -hmm. uh, putting your arrow. The, the the proposed soccer field currently is 40 acres of detention that is occasionally used and we can't eliminate that. So that has to be moved to the north. That sort of prohibits the use of that area. Um, but the orientation of the building, uh, I think there's still lots of discussion to be had there. Um, I wouldn't really characterize it as an amphitheater though. Um, I would, uh, what, what did we put on the, what's actually on the plan? Uh, the uh, it's the event pavilion, community orchards, and native plant pollinator gardens is that whole area. Yeah. Um, so it would have hard um, walls, I guess you'd say, most likely that to help mitigate any sound concerns, um, open air. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a very good concern, uh, and it will certainly be addressed some more. Yeah, thank you. Good thought. Um, Question, if bathrooms are added to the soccer fields, will this be on the soccer club to maintain? Um, Hugh, could you take that one? Uh, what was it asking about the fit, the new field? Um, if the bathrooms are, at, if bathrooms are oh. added to the soccer complex, who may Well, okay, yeah. So we, the city has a current agreement with the soccer club. And uh, I, I don't think that this would actually happen within the, uh, actually come to be built within the terms of the existing complex uh, existing agreement so i can't totally answer that question uh the way it's currently handled is the soccer complex is is or the soccer club is responsible for everything in their fenced area which includes their own um uh, porta potties and and also their concession building and other things that you know maintenance buildings I think that the initial answer would be yes, they would be responsible for the maintenance of the buildings that their facility uses. Um, but that could possibly change in 2027. Uh, we have a question, are the water features required and where will the wa water come from? Um, so they are not required. Uh, I think I assume you're talking about the splash pad. Um, um, they aren't, but I think they were added based on the input that was received in the um, in the the recreation needs study and then in the 2017, 18, 19 outreach. Um, That's right. Those are one of uh, a very highly requested item. Uh, and anybody who lives in Vacaville in those days when it's over 100 can understand why the kiddos need a place to cool off. Um, but as we talked about earlier, the amount of water that's used in those can vary tremendously upon the design. And we certainly are very keen on not uh, creating any extra water usage. I had uh, another comment just suggesting that we use footprint, not number of courts for pickleball, um, because pickleball takes about half the space as tennis. And you can see that here, the, the, little, the blue square here is the, uh, the pickleball, four pickleball courts and this green, the larger green squares are the four tennis courts. Um, question is, are you considering a solar parking lot? Um, 
you know, that had not been discussed. Hugh, does the city looked into solar either here or at other locations? Yes, I, I would say that that's uh, very much a possibility. Um, the, the park itself really doesn't consume all that much power. Uh, I mean, at nighttime it does, but just during the day. But nevertheless, uh, that's getting to be more and more feasible. You see lots of them going up at schools and, and apartment complexes and other, and, and other facilities. I think that's very much a possibility. Uh, we have not shown that in the master plan specifically, but I think we will kind of going alongside with that, we will have to show some electric uh, vehicle electric vehicle charging stations. And so that would likely be supported by having uh, solar collectors too. Um, our next question was, um, should or would there be some sort of annual bike park pass or parking pass fees to offset some of the long-term maintenance um, and, and costs associated with that? Um, is that something you, part of the city's looked at? Uh, yeah, this act, this question's come up before. Um, well, as you probably know, we we do charge a parking uh, fee out at Lagoon Valley Park, and uh, that's a five dollar fee, or you can get a twenty five dollar pass for six months, which is really a pretty good deal. We get a lot of complaints from the from citizens about that because they say, "I already pay, uh, you know, taxes. Why can't my park be provided free?" My general answer to that is, did you know that 40% of the visitors to Lagoon Valley Park are not residents of Vacaville? We think that in the Centennial Park is, it's being designed primarily and firstly to serve the residents of Vacaville. And so I would, I, I don't expect to charge any kind of parking fee or pass. Um, that being said, it is possible. We have entertained the idea of a, uh, a private entity who might run a facility uh, such as the bike park. And if that were the case, they would have to derive some sort of revenue. Um, so that's still being explored. But at this point in time, I would say generally the answer is no. Well, I'm, I'm just going to skip since we're talking bike park real quick. Uh, I see Daniel uh, just... Um, posted a comment um, about have, has the city considered working with any of the Bay Area bike brands or advocacy groups to sponsor the bike park or augment features? Um, uh, Hugh, I don't know if you've had any conversations of that nature at this point. Uh, yeah, we well, we've had not so much for sponsorship, but we've had a number of discussions and inquiries and actually even formal proposals to operate a bike park. Uh, and so we will continue to um, entertain those those um, those options. Uh, it it seems like it works very well at a number of other locations around the state, and so that could possibly work for us too. We just haven't nothing's been uh, uh, no no sign, contract signed uh, no <laughs> nothing like that so far. Um, and I'm gonna just. Doris, I see your comment there, your question, but I, I thank you for clarifying when we were talking about water features earlier, um, they were referring to the ponds. Um, oh. And so, yes, so those ponds, because they are existing wetlands, even though they were existing wetlands as a result of the water treatment plant, um, at this point, they've been established for so long, they are going to be considered jurisdictional features by at least the state and probably by the federal government as well, which means, um, Filling them and impacting them results in a very high mitigation and environmental costs that would just add to the development costs of the project, which is why they they are being substantially preserved on site. But uh, uh, just to kind of carry off on that, uh, we won't be um, uh, artificially adding water to those ponds. Some some of the water that goes in there is uh, is derived from runoff natural runoff, but the city does not plan to augment that. Right. So those those will be seasonal wetlands, uh, similar to how they function now, not permanent ponds that are going to have water during the summer. Uh, and then to jump back up to Doris's question, she wanted to clearify um, that is it is it likely that the soccer complex would not get bathrooms during that lease period? Um, I would say that's a fair assumption, uh, not absolute, 
but I would say it's a fair assumption, primarily because of the high cost of joining into the sewer district. Um, uh, and then Karen did point out as a follow-up to her previous comment that yes, the community center will need more power. Um, and so that may make the solar parking lot more attractive with that. Right. Um, and or um, obviously putting solar panels on top of that building. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, to my knowledge, we have gone through all of the chat questions, comments, and thank you for um, for the discussion that's gone on. Um, that's oh, okay. Um, I see uh, one about asking for more volleyball courts. Um, I saw that they wanted the volleyball courts kind of together. I did not see the one that wanted more volleyball. Looks like four. The request was possibly for four. Uh, adjacent to each other naturally. Yeah. Okay. So possibly that. We'll go through that. Um, oh, sorry. Got it. It was right. It, I think it took a little longer to get to my computer than yours for some reason. There it is. Now I see it. Um, uh, so a couple of questions, a couple other things. Uh, one, if we consider sol solar, definitely I think battery storage would be a an option to look into, uh, depending on the you know, the state of the technology when that happens. Um, what, uh, and then there's a question, what about attaching all the courts to the recreation center and running them from there? Um, you it, they will, on. yeah, each of the, those larger facilities will have their own uh, disconnect, but the, uh, the, the, the power that comes in will be probably through one meter, I would imagine from the south end. Oh. Um, by the I'm, way, I should take this opportunity to point out that, uh, the viability of lighting that is solar powered independently is now becoming a reality. So the four um, uh, pickleball courts that we are planning to build down in uh, Roberts Ranch, we anticipate those will actually be solar powered lights. And if those work out, we could do the same thing here. Well, uh, I, I interpreted that question about attaching the courts to the recreation center differently. I interpreted it about maybe what about making them more of a physical complex, more like a like oh. fitness center kind of thing. Um, I, 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 that's what I thought he was talking about. Or that just person, as, you mean just as the physical location? Yeah. And so then it would be more kind of managed as part of that. So part of the answer to that is we are very limited in that area because of the wetlands that we are trying to impact to the very minimum, the existing uh, ball fields to the west and Pine Tree Creek to the south. Uh, and plus, we, we know we're going to be challenged for parking for that uh, rec center. So having the flexibility of, of putting the courts um, in the corners, I guess you'd say, or the, the odd pieces uh, um, seems to be efficient, but I would not rule that out either. It's it's however we can design that area to be most efficient. Right. And then I see, uh, yeah, I request for four sand volleyball courts in a lighted facility. Um, um, that shit, man. That that there may be kind of there, and that there's a high anticipated demand for um, for beach volleyball um, uh, potentially coming coming up in the future. So I think that's something we can look at along with the other input. So thank you. Um, uh, okay, and there's a question. There's so much open land. So. Um, yeah, there's next comment as it was, and so much habitat. Um, and so as the master plan was developed through the, the previous rounds of uh, kind of conceptualizing and outreach and, and, and different versions, that's sort of where it settled on this sort of three part area and keeping really a very large portion of it as open space and, and natural habitat um, that did rank very highly, I think, in all of the outreach efforts the city has done over the years that open space, access to nature and trails are one of the most recommend, most requested amenities for this. Actually, the, the very highest. Yeah, no. that's right. I believe you said on, on Saturday that it is trails and open space and then bathrooms yeah. are our one, <laughs> our one and two in, in every outreach. So. Um, 
so it's trying to, to strike that balance um, of, of things. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, okay. And now if anybody, I'm happy, we're happy to keep answering questions in the chat. You can also, if you would like to raise your hand, um, you can uh, do that. We have one more question. Are the trails considered multi-use? Um, yes, the trails are pedestrian and bike uh, friendly. I do not, they're not intended at this point to be equestrian or motorized vehicles. Right. Certainly not motorized. Uh, we have much better options for equestrian users. So uh, hiking, biking, walking, uh, those types of, you know, uh, activities would be, um, each of these trails are going to be designed a little differently, I think. So some are like, for example, the bike trail along the western edges is uh, 10 foot wide paved. It's part of our bikeway system. So it's very suitable for that. Uh, some of these uh, may be just DG surfaced and possibly even a single track trail, depending upon uh, both maintenance and, and, uh, and access needs. So I think there'll be a variety of surfacing, but um, yeah, certainly not motorized and, and likely uh, not intended for equestrian use. You have any other questions? All right, then I actually have one more question for all of you, if you could quickly. We, uh, we tried some new outreach kind of methods to, uh, to get the, this pair of meetings to announce them to the community. And we just wanted to get an idea of um, what actually worked. So I have one more poll for everybody. If you could just take a moment, it's just one question. How did you hear about tonight's meeting? Um, and help the city do a better job in the future um, of continuing to improve their outreach, please. Give it a few more seconds. Okay, end that poll. Thank you all. And uh, I think as we can see, um, that banner was was definitely useful. That was that lit up first for sure. Um, and social media and word of mouth. Um, Hugh, I think unfortunately the newspaper ad um, uh, is is maybe. Uh, was was not not very effective. So, thank you all. I think all we didn't for... spend a lot of money on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, bad news for the newspaper. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, thank you all for helping for giving us that feedback. I really appreciate it. As does Hugh. Um, okay. And um, oh, we have one more co a comment over here. Thank you. Um. So from somebody who volunteers at the Elk Grove Bike Park, um, and they have no paid maintenance workers. Um, they All the rest of the maintenance is by volunteer, um, but they say they would recommend a part-time specialist who maintains the bike park area. And we have an agreement finger, it looks like, from, um, from Daniel. So um, I think that's definitely something that the city will be kind of considering as that moves forward. Hugh, I don't know if you have thoughts you want to respond as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and please, uh, for those who've contacted us on that particular thing, uh, please continue to keep in contact with us because we would like to be able to tap into your experience as we go forward in that area. Cool. All right. Well, we are coming up to the end of our meeting time. I'm happy to answer any more questions um, or keep talking with anybody or you know, if you would like to actually uh, to raise your hand and and talk on the meeting on the recording, you are welcome to do that. Hi, this is chat. Peter Harvey. I have one quick question. Sorry, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess my question is in regards to uh, Helix. 
Are you guys mm -hmm. primarily just like drafting the plans? Or are you guys responsible for hiring contractors to do the work as well? Right. Um, so we're under contract to develop, to finalize the master plan and do the phasing plan and cost estimates. So the city has that basis to work off of. Uh, and that will be the end of, of our plan. Uh, we actually, Scott, Carolyn, and I are all um, landscape ar architects and landscape designers. So that's where um, we, we come in. And then um, after that, the city will take that concept and phasing plan and, and use that to start going into that next step of development and looking for securing funding uh, things. And then ultimately, uh, the city will be the one um, hiring contractors or, or doing that work or, or, um, or finding people to, that will like develop certain areas of it. Okay. And then for future meetings for like that are specific. Mm -hmm. We can't hear you, Peter. Uh, I think you may have your microphone uh, muted. Um, I may try to help answer what I think uh, he was asking. Uh, and that was, uh, how we reach out to the public has changed in recent years. Um, that's one of the reasons we asked for that poll about the best way to contact folks or how people that made it to this meeting were uh, found out about the meeting. And so we will expand our efforts in the future uh, to contact people in the ways that are most efficient and seem to reach the most people and doesn't seem like that's the newspaper anymore. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think he was also asking about maybe future meetings and when were those going to be. Um, yeah. So this at this point, there are no more planned dedicated meetings to this. Our next future meetings will be at the Park and Rec Commission, um, and we will get their input, make any changes. And then um, I, I, at this point, we're planning on being twice to the Park and Rec Commission, uh, and then also the Planning Commission and City Council, uh, as I said, probably in April through June of next year. So um, if you kind of keep your eyes on those agendas, that's when we're we're planning on um, having this available for more stuff. And I think Hugh, you'll you'll be continuing to post the website. You can also um, it we we collected email addresses at the meeting on Saturday. I think if uh, you want to uh, send Hugh an email and he will add you to that email list and then you can get it. Well, he can send out notifications. This, that's going to be handled by the city. Um, so the city can then send out notifications of the next uh, chance when it's going to the Park and Recreation Commission, things like that. And, and by the way, just on that subject, so the uh, city's Park and Recreation Commission meets the first Wednesday of each month. Uh, so you can go on the city's webpage ahead of time and see what's on the agenda. Uh, anybody is free at any time to come and speak to the to the commission on uh, subjects that aren't, you know, that may or may not be on the agenda. So even if you uh, wanted to to share your thoughts on something in particular uh, with regarding Centennial Park or even other things that are park and recreation related, that is a good opportunity to speak to your commissioners. That's the first Wednesday of every uh, month at 6 p.m. in the city council chambers. And Hugh, I just wanna confirm, it is hew.hesterman at cityofvacaville.com, correct? Yes, you're right. You know, I realized that the city actually expanded its email <laughs> uh, uh, services uh, oh, probably a couple of years ago, and I guess that didn't get changed on that location. So it is hew.hesterman at cityofvacaville.com. This, the one that's shown on the slide may actually still work. I'm not sure. Sorry about that. Um, but now you know to go, to go to your IT guys tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Update the website, please. Um, there were too many Smiths working for the city. I think it was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So... All right. Well, thank you all very, very much for your time today and for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I um, hope that we helped answer some questions. And as I said, if you have any more comments, 
feel free to get in touch with Hugh and um, he will pass them on to us and we will be working closely with him over the next few months to make some tweaks and, and see where we go and what changes are made. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and um, stop recording somewhere. There we go. Stop recording um, and have a great night, everybody.